Hello Pilots and welcome to Out of Art Gaming's Faction Breakdown. This is part two of the Rebel Alliance. In this video we're going to look at the remaining ships that you can get in standard play for the Rebels. So without further ado, let's kick straight off. Moving on now to some of the ships that have actually crossed over the faction boundary, we have the Fang Fighter, recently introduced in the Pride of Mandalore pack for the Rebellion. We get four pilots for the Rebellion, which is really quite interesting, adding some extra flavour to them. Now, the Fang Fighter is just a great ship. It's rightly feared in the hands of most players in the Scum faction. And there are a number of pilots in that faction that we're already aware of and we'll go through the scum pack but looking at the fang fighter it has a modest stat line of three attack three evade and four hull which doesn't sound like much but that one extra hull really can be the difference between life and death with this ship with an impressive action bar of focus target lock barrel roll to red focus and boost to red focus this ship is maneuverable and has the punch to take out your enemy with a great action bar as well meaning it can go fast and it also has a great array of blue maneuvers it has the 4k turn and the two talon roll what really sets this ship apart from others though is the ship ability concordia face off while you defend if the attack range is one and you are in the attacker's forward arc, change one result to an evade result. So this ship really is your in-your-face punchy ship you just got to be careful with. Now, this ship you'll normally find flying around the edges, getting right into your enemy, getting that prime opportunity, then just going straight for the throat. You definitely want to be aware of this one. Now, there are obviously a number of good pilots here, most of whom we already are aware of through the Scum Faction, including Fen Rao. But what I want to have a look at is Dirk Ulladin, the Aspiring Commando. With his ability, after you fully execute a red maneuver and perform a red action, you may require a lock on an enemy ship in your forward arc at range 1. Now, this really plays into the Fang Fighter's ability of just getting right into your opponent as quickly as possible. With this, you can fly forward in, barrel roll, red focus, and then gain a target lock. And you have a double modded shot with an impressive ship. So this is rightly to be feared. Now, there are some pros and cons with this ship. One of the big pros is that it is not afraid to get into your face. With Concordia Face Off, it actually has a remarkable amount of survivability in there. One of the negatives, this ship does not get access to Fearless, which is a scum-only ability, which is normally stapled onto this ship and really does help. But with 4 hull, it actually has a little bit more survivability than, say, a TIE Interceptor. You will feel the lack of shields on this ship, though, so you do have to be careful. Those crits are going to be painful, but with all of these ships having a fairly decent loadout as well, they are worth having a look at and they can be a nice complement to those T-65s. Now for another ship you might be more familiar seeing in the Scum faction, however it is a great addition to the Rebellion. We have the Hawk 290 Light Freighter. This ship is a very surprising package. It can, it can do quite well. Sometimes it can be a bit overlooked, but this is a really cool ship to have in your arsenal. Now looking at its stat line, it does have a two turret attack, two evades, three hull and two shields, with a very good action bar of focus to red rotate, target lock to red rotate, red boost, white rotate and a red jam action. It has the zero stop maneuver, which is always handy. It can go up to four in the straights and has all the banks, not a lot of blues on here and it doesn't have a quick way to turn around. However, when you do have a turret arc, that is not necessarily a bad thing. Now, as a general role for this ship within the Rebellion faction, it is majority of the time a support ship. A lot of the pilots in here do have the ability to really amplify 
your squadron, which is a very rebel thing to have. Now, there are two pilots that I really like on the Hawk. Uh, not discounting the other named pilot, but firstly, we're going to have a look at Jan Ors. So while a friendly ship in your firing arc performs a primary attack, if you are not stressed, you may gain one stress token. If you do, that ship may roll one additional attack die. I mean, that sounds like a great ability to me, and especially if you've equipped them with the Moldy Crow to give it the forward arc and the turret arc. You potentially have 180 degrees of use for this ability. So that is absolutely powerful allowing, say, Wedge to get an extra dice whilst removing all those dice that he will always do. Another pilot that's really interesting as well is Rock Garnet. At the start of the engagement phase, you may choose one ship in your firing arc. If you do, it engages at initiative seven instead of its standard initiative value this phase. No penalties for that. So here's an instant look at for the Hawk. He also has an incredibly impressive loadout on there. He is quite a points cost though, with the name Hawk Pilots being over a quarter of your list. But when you include that with the Moldy Crow title, gaining that primary weapon with a value of three, and during the end phase you do not remove up to two focus tokens, you know what? There's a lot of things going for this ship, and you can apply enough modifications and upgrades to make these seriously hard hitters or potentially just there to really support your team. Now, as I said, one of the pros is the ability to support your squadron so strongly with various pilots, including Jan Ors, Rock Garnet, and Carl Katarn. One of the downsides, it doesn't have the greatest of movement dials, so it can suffer there. But when you couple that with its turret arc, you can almost get away with it and make the ship a lot more versatile. But all in all, the Hawk 290 is a really fun ship to fly, and if you like synergy in your list, definitely worth looking at some of those pilots. Now for the final small base standard ship you get with the Rebellion, we have the Z95 AF4 Headhunter, everyone's favorite mini X-Wing. This ship is very cheap, but also a good amount of fun and can have some really cool tricks up its sleeve. With only two attack, two evade, two hull, two shields, it has a very similar stat line to the A-Wing minus that evade there. The dial on it isn't too bad either. You do get access to the one through four straights, all the banks, two and three hearts, with a few blues spattered in there. You've got the three and four red k -turn. Now it doesn't have the best action bar with just focus, target lock and a red barrel roll. However, again, this ship is very cheap. At time of recording, all pilots on here are just three points. So it's a nice one to fill in those little gaps where you've got some other pilots that you can't quite fit in there. Now, as a general role, it is most likely going to be a filler ship. It's unlikely that you're going to be wanting to field lots of these as the main meat of your squadron. So you'll find these supporting other ships. Now, looking at some notable pilots, one that obviously came to prevalence quite a lot, although has shifted slightly in the meta due to the most recent points update, is Lieutenant Blount. While you perform a primary attack, if there's at least one other friendly ship at range zero to one of the defender, you may roll one additional attack die. Now, even with his slight points increase, you do get a loadout note now, which is fantastic. That is a great ability, especially if you are running him really quickly, say with the Fang Fighters and getting right in people's face, that's gonna give you a three dice attack. And if you're at range zero to one as well, that's a four dice attack with the ability to add two talents on there and a modification. You can be putting in some serious hurt with Lieutenant Blount. Now, again, big pros for this ship. It is cheap, so fielding this one isn't going to feel like a huge drain on your points. And if it does go down, you're not going to feel too bad on the point side of things either. It's got a fairly good dial. Yes, not having any great maneuverability options in there in the barrel roll being red can be a bit tricky and you will feel that a ship of its size and speed is lacking that. But you can always put expert handling on there to give it the white barrel roll if you decide. 
Now, again, it doesn't have a lot of health and only two of eight dice for that little health is going to feel quite bad. But again, with it being so cheap, you're not really going to feel too bad about that. It's more there to fill the gaps in your list and support some of the other ships and just try and get a few extra points in as and where you can. A great ship for going and getting those objectives potentially. So now looking at another medium based ship for the Rebel Alliance, we have the ARC-170 Starfighter. This is a fantastic ship, looks really cool. Obviously came over from the Republic and in typical Rebel fashion they've managed to salvage this. Now originally introduced in 1.0 as a Rebel ship, I absolutely love this ship. It used to fly it all the time in 1.0 don't fly it so much in 2.0 unfortunately but I do still think this is a great ship. Now with an interesting stat line of three red dice out the front, two out the back, one of eight dice, six hull and three shields, you get quite a meaty ship that can pack a good punch. Now you get access to focus, target lock and the red barrel roll with this ship. Now when looking at the ship, other things to note is the dial on this. It's another interesting one. It's a typical medium based ship, so it's not the best dial. It does have a good amount of blues in its one and two straight and bank. It has the hard two, hard three, which is red, four straight, which is red, and it does have a 4K turn, which does allow it to turn around so it does have a slight advantage over the U-Wing that we mentioned from our previous video. Now, you don't get a lot of pilots with this and they are all named pilots, so there's no generic ARC-170 at this time. However, you never know, maybe in a future release we might get some generics for this ship. Now, there is one pilot I'm gonna look at in a moment, but I just wanna make a shout out for Nora Wexley, who has another appearance for the Rebels in the ARC-170 with the same ability as she has in the Y-Wing. Now, it's a great ability on the ARC-170 as well, just like on the Y-Wing, so gives this ship a little bit more chance to tank those shots. But the pilot I want to look at is actually Ibtisan, if that's how you pronounce it, I always struggle with that one. Um, so your I-3 pilot, Survivor of Endor. Now his ability, after you fully execute a manoeuvre, if you are stressed, you may roll one attack die. On a hit or crit result, remove one stress token. So another ship in the Rebellion that plays with the stress, slightly different to those B-Wings we mentioned in the last video, but this is a great ability. The option of getting rid of that stress without having to do a blue does mean you can actually be a bit crazier with the maneuvers on it. Now, this ship doesn't see a lot of play, but you'll more than likely find it as an alternative option to your U-Wing, just getting in there, providing some good punch. There's some great options on there with Veteran Tail Gunner allowing you to shoot out the front and back at the same time if you can line that up or just get right in your enemy's face. You can give it the white barrel roll with expert handling and that's actually something that I like to put on there just to give it a little bit more of a chance. Now, again, this ship can hit really well with those three red dice out the front. So that is always going to be worth looking at something that doesn't get that much of a, a look in really but it is quite powerful and being able to shoot out the back is always going to be quite good you can normally add torpedoes to this as well which does mean it can act as a mini gunboat for you now only having one natural evade does mean that that health is going to drop quite rapidly and unless you have got some mechanisms on there to improve the blues or make that barrel roll white you will find the lack of maneuverability on this ship can be a bit of a challenge but all in all the arc 170 is really good fun definitely worth having a look at it is a bit of a points investment given that it's a medium based ship but we do like it here
moving on to the large base ships of the Rebel Alliance now, we have two incredibly iconic ships. We're going to start by looking at the VCX-100 Light Freighter, aka the Ghost. This is a really cool ship, a massive model, almost borderline epic size with this, to the point it actually comes with its own separate flight stand. Um, the 1.0 super shaky flight stand or the really sturdy 2.01 but a great model really good fun to fly on the board not quite as space take up as the gauntlet but it is a very large ship and its stat line reflects that as well it has a very healthy four red dice attack no evades so you will find that quite a challenge but you do get 10 hull and four shields making this one of the healthiest ships in the game again without counting the epic base ships now for an action bar you get focus you get target lock and you get the reinforce action now you do also get the inbuilt ship ability tail gun while you have a dock ship you have a primary rear arc weapon with an attack value equal to your dock ship's primary firing arc attack value. So that's with the Sheathapede or the Phantom. So it does mean that you get a little bit of extra firepower by having those docked, plus other abilities that you will get with those ships as well, as we mentioned in the last video with the Sheathapede. Now, for a dial, you do get access to a lot of the maneuvers there, so you go all of the one through three basic maneuvers not many blues one and two straight and the two bank are blue you get the one hard and three hard that are red you get a four straight so this can move quite fast and you also get the incredibly impressive 4k turn so flipping this ship around quite quickly and surprising your enemies now, as a general role, you'll probably find this as a mix of heavy hitter and support ship, especially with the Sheathapede when it's docked, allowing you to coordinate before you activate is going to be really handy. But you will find that this ship is not best suited for running straight in and trying to take on a whole squadron. It will go down quite quickly. Now, there are five pilots that you actually get for this um, including Hera, Kanan Jarrus and Chopper as you would expect from the Rebels TV series but the one we're going to look at today is actually Alexander Callas. He was available in the Hot Shots and Aces pack and I think he's probably one of the best pilots on the Ghost. Now his ability while you defend if the attacker modified any attack dice you may roll one additional defense die. Now, if you've seen our game a while back with the three player game where we actually had three ghosts on the board, this ability came up very handy and very useful in actually rolling evades for a ghost. It was quite good fun. Now, they are very expensive to field. Um, you can get two on the board, um, but it's going to take up a lot of your points. But it is a very cool ship you get access to a lot of modifications there talents sensors turrets crew gunner that you have the ghost title which allows you to dock the attack shuttle or sheathapede now pros and cons with this ship pro it has a four dice attack which you can't understate how powerful that is get it in range one five dice attack if you've got target lock and focus double modded that is going to be powerful if you're using Kanan Jarrus you also have the force there so that is an incredible tool to have in your arsenal negatives zero evade anyone that flies these very large ships such as this or the decimator zero evade is always going to be a challenge you will find it they will go down quite quickly if you're not careful with them so you'll end up using that reinforce quite heavily but the reinforce is a great action for this ship 
but that's the ghost we're going to move on to the final ship of the rebel alliance but just for reminding guys we are going to be looking at all of the factions for their standard ships and then covering their extended ships later in the year if there are any pilots that you think we've missed or that deserve a mention drop a comment below interested to hear what you think again we fly all factions but we might not be as familiar with some so just let us know if there's any pilots that you think have been unjustly missed in our commentary here now to round out the standard ships for the rebel alliance we have none other than the millennium falcon or to give it its rebellion title, the modified YT 1300 light freighter. This is quite possibly the most iconic ship in all of Star Wars, or even all of science fiction in general. Everyone knows this ship. Now, we don't see the Rebel Falcon as often as we do, say, the Scum or Resistance Falcon, quite possibly due to the wealth of ships that the Rebellion actually has access to, which is a shame because it's the Millennium Falcon. It is super cool and we all love it. Now, the different versions do have slightly differing stat lines. So for the Rebellion, you do get the three red dice attack, the Bowtie Turret Arc. You get one of eight dice, eight hull, five shields. You also get a force user in Lair Organa and you get access to some of the most iconic characters within all of Star Wars. Now for an action bar you get focus, target lock, red boost and the rotate action. You can equip so many things on this ship, talents, missiles, crew, gunner, modifications, elicits. You also get access to the Millennium Falcon title while you defend, if you are evading, you may roll one defense die, which is always going to be really handy, considering you've only got one defense die, so if you get a chance to re-roll it, it can be really handy. Now, it has a really good dial, actually, for a large base ship. Um, one through four straight, all the banks, and the two and three hard. A good amount of blues. One through three are blue straights and the two banks. You get the 4k turn and the three sloop in red. So you can get the ship turned around quite quickly. Now, again, as a general role for this ship, it's most likely going to be getting in there and trying to cause as much damage as possible, utilizing its quite healthy stat line there. Again, only one evade bit tricky but to be honest it's the Millennium Falcon it's gonna to want to get straight into that fight and start causing damage now when looking at the Millennium Falcon I think there's only really one pilot that we were ever going to look at and that is Han Solo himself initiative six scoundrel for hire his ability after you roll dice if you are at range zero to one of an obstacle you may re-roll all of your dice this does not count as re-rolling for the purpose of other effects. That is just such a great ability. It's, it's, it can't be stated how good that ability is. It allows you to skirt those rocks, re-roll dice, and just be an absolute pain to your opponents. So good, so powerful, and in general I think he's probably the Rebel Falcon that you are most likely to take. Now, looking at the pros and cons of this ship, I think the biggest pro is you get to fly the Millennium Falcon. I mean, what more can you say? It's such a cool ship, and it looks great on the board. It's really good, actually, when it comes to taking on your opponent. It's quite healthy. You'll probably find that some people as well will shy away from attacking it because of how much health it's got. And even though it's only got one evade, they're probably gonna look at some of your other ships first. But again, when you've got Han Solo Initiative 6, it's just absolutely insane. I mean, you've got Leia and Lando at Initiative 5 as well. So you have some really good high initiative pilots in there. 
again, one evade does make it a little bit soft when it comes to being attacked. You can find that after repeated shots at it, it can go down fairly quickly. But again, I don't think it's going to be too much of a problem there. And even with the limited amount of blues on there, it's still able to get rid of that stress quite quickly. But you can really pack this ship out with a lot of tricks and tools to mitigate any of the negatives on there. But guys, that is the standard ships for the Rebel Alliance. Now, I know we have had a comment about the gauntlet not being featured in our Imperial Breakdown. We will be doing a separate video for the gauntlet with it spanning over five factions. We just want to do it in one video because we think that that will be the best way to really do that ship justice. Rather than repeating some of the points over and over, we'll just do it in one video. So that will be coming soon as well. So don't worry, guys. But just want to say thank you very much for watching the video. If you do like what we're doing here, please subscribe to the channel. Click like on that video and we will see you next time.